Hey guys, it's been a little while since I made a video. I'm going to do a little video of me relearning some 45 ACP. This isn't going to be an instructional video. There's many, many of them out there. There's also many of these. It's just a little video of me doing some relearning. Put a little input here and there. Probably not a whole lot of talking. Mostly just relearning. This is the decapper and sizer, I think. I'm, I'm pretty new at relearning, so I don't know every single thing about it. I know 45 is pretty easy. One with pistol calibers, I would say, are all fairly easy. Right now I'm just decapping everything and resizing it. I'll be repriming them later. And Putting the bullet in and the powder and all that stuff then later on today. I'll film that as well. This is going to be 44 rounds that I'm going to reload. I lost five of them at the rifle range, or at the pistol range a week ago. Going again tomorrow. I figured I might as well reload some more ammo. Well, I have the video going. Here's the Delton AR-15. Here's a little update on it. I do have a red dot on it now. I no longer have the big old scoop. So I still I just literally got this about a month ago. I need to sight it in yet. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I went the other week to sight it in, but I had forgotten that with a red dot you can't see the holes like you can with the scope. So there was a lot of people there and I just decided to screw it and went home. Because I'd have to keep going forward every couple of rounds to take a look where it was hitting. So that's a little update with that. So I'm going to set that in tomorrow morning real early. I'm bringing another rifle with a scope to do that. This will be the third time I've reloaded these particular shells right here. See, this one's a little boogered up on the side. It'll still fire, though. That's one thing I figured out on my own. That if you do get a malfunction, it'll be because of that little lip there, but it doesn't really hurt anything. It'll still fire. It just doesn't look the prettiest. I mean, if you're going for ultra reliability, you want to get rid of that shell casing. A few of these here, like that other one, this one got a little bit bent as well. That was from the very first time I was reloading the crimp. Either the crimp or the bullet seeker was doing that. So I had it too tight or something. There's 25 decapped. Not gonna speed this video up or anything, or probably not gonna cut anything out, depending on how long it takes. And it'll probably be about a 30 minute video.
go a little bit. See if I can get that back out. That one should probably be tossed. I don't know. I don't know how well that would come back out. If so, it's probably going to be all jagged. So I'm just going to toss that one. So you got to be careful when you're putting them in. You don't bend them like I just did. Otherwise, you're going to run out of shells quickly. Fortunately, at the range, everyone was shooting nine millimeter and three eighty. I rarely see someone shoot forty five. And there was a, probably two, three hundred shell cases of nine millimeter laying on the ground, but I don't own a nine millimeter. And someone else was already picking them up. They came a little bit, a couple minutes after I did, but if I really wanted them, I would have got them pretty quick. So there's 43, because I bent this one. So yeah, 43. Plus the. Alright, here are the shell casings afterwards. I don't know how well the GoPro is going to zoom in on the quality, or not zoom in, but capture the quality. But I do not own a tumbler, and I'm too cheap to go out and buy one, so I do not tumble my ammo. I wash it, and then just reload it. I haven't had any problems, like I said, it's been the third time through with these particular shell casings. One of these days, I'll pull the trigger on a reloader, or not a reloader, a tumbler. That way we won't have to keep having dirty ammunition. So now on phase two, which is priming and powdering. I guess that would be the term for it. Now I have the Lee perfect powder measure something like that it's one of those I don't there's two of them I don't remember which one this is right off so this is the one that mounts on the reloader and here are my primers put them on this little slot here this is the powder I'm using 700x Eighteen dollars. It's one pound of seven hundred X. Now it's actually fourteen ounces. So I'm gonna fill this up some more. Should be good. These are the primers I'm using. Winchester large pistol. That one's empty. Here's my scale right here. It's literally an $18 scale off eBay. It's Hornaday. Not exactly sure of the name or if it even has a name. Just a Hornaday ammo scale. What I've noticed is the first the first round that you that you powder put powder in almost always is a few grains high. So I'm not even going to measure this, I'm just going to dump it back in. Alright, now I'm going to measure it. See, I don't have my disc anymore, because it got lost. So I just have to be very... Scale zero it out. I have to be very careful when I dump it. 4.4, 4 4.5, that's about what I want. So now I'm going to set this in there. I'm going to try to dump the scale back in here. I need to find that stupid little um, disc that comes with it. Set that aside. Afterwards, I always check to make sure that they all have the same amount of ammo in, or not same amount of ammo, same amount of powder. Make sure they're all in the general amount of area. 
probably can't even see that. It's not super great lighting in here. Yeah, I'm still kind of learning how to do this. decided to skip ahead a little bit. I want the video to be about too long. Preferably under 15 minutes. Once you get the hang of it, you can get it rolling pretty quick. Primer is nice and flush with the bottom of the case. It is. Powder level looks to be identical, which is very good. Not a very good. Whoops! Flip my hand clip. From what I hear, it's a very good idea to check and recheck the powder about every 10 rounds. Remeasure it, make sure you're not over powdering or even under powdering, but over powdering for sure. You don't want to do. Basically, as long as the bullet leaves the barrel fine for under powdering. Just your weapon may not completely cycle if it's a semi-automatic. But overpowering, if you do a double powder charge, blow's going up. So far this video is one two minutes and fifty seconds. I feel like I misplaced some of these. I'm not even going to cut this video here. Get rid of that. Gently remove this. Turn it off first. I didn't have it off from the last time I used it, which was a couple months ago. Probably a good idea to put the powder back in the jar. I'm not going to, but. Right there is what I have it set at. I don't think I've messed with it since the last time. Had very good results with the last set of reloads I did. The first set I did was terrible, jam after jam. I'm going to show you what I did with that one. The second round was definitely more powerful. I cheated the bullet further. The gun liked it better. It's a little rib right there. The first time I had it, just very, very little of that rib showing. Second time I have it flush with that. That in improves the overall function of the gun, and I could definitely feel it was a hotter round. So that's one of the ones that's got the little kink in it. But when I run it through the crimp and die, that'll, that'll take care of that. 
So what I like to do is grab a handful of these legs, just lay them down. You gotta be careful here you don't spill your powder. Right now I'm verifying all of them are powder charged and they are. There's another one. It's also a good idea to check the overall length. I'm not going to, but again, it's still a good idea to do so. That's completely flush. Five minutes and thirty seconds. Probably gonna cut the camera off in about two or three more rounds. Just because I don't want the video to go too long. Then no one probably will end up watching it the whole way through. Reloading pure lead, 230 grain projectiles. Definitely want to wash your hands after this after messing with the lead. That one got in there a little bit cockeyed. I mean, it's in straight now, but right here is a little fragment of the lead that got chipped off. That's, that's fine. I think it takes a good bit to mess up the cakes. Like, I think, honestly, I think the worst thing that can happen, if you do bang up the case a little bit, is it'll jam. I mean, unless you really somehow mess it up, I don't think you'll have a problem. As long as the bullets in straight, which they almost have to be. And I'm going to cut the camera off now, and I'll pick it up the last ten. Alright, got about ten left. Still need to run them through the crimp die, obviously. I think that's probably one of the more important one steps. They're not very tight in here without that. I don't think it would chamber. Uh -oh. This one was a the bullet doesn't want to go in this one very well. See, when I get to the sizing die, I don't put it all the way up in because if you size it too much, then you find one of them. All the ones with the buckled up case is from the ones that were expanded too much. Like I ran it through the um, powder charge twice. That expands it more than once, obviously. And then it crushes the side when it goes down on the bullet seater here and the crimper. So I like to keep it as tight as I can on the bullet, which is something I figured out pretty quick. So I'm going to go to the pistol range tomorrow, blast off these, so we'll have a video of that too. So there should be two videos coming out this week on this channel. Maybe even three, I don't know if I'm going to film with the AR or not probably will a little bit. I mean the rifle range itself is a whole lot of fun with the AR-15 because you can only, just because of the rules, you can only shoot three rounds at a time legally. You can't load your rifle with more than three and you can't fire more than three. So that kind of sucks because the point of having some automatic is blasting off a whole magazine when you feel like spending the money. But it just sucks that you're not allowed.
Alright, now this casing primed, but there's no powder because I dropped it there and spilled it. This is the final one. I'm gonna take this out real quick. Put this in. I'm gonna repowder this one. So let's heat that bowl. every now and again and I'll do it as often as you should because it doesn't mean you should definitely should check them not necessarily do it as often as I should though but that's not a good thing either alright there's that one called the crimping die. Basically what it does, for, now, for anyone who hasn't reloaded before, takes that and smashes the end of the, end of the case so the bullets in there real tight. Okay. I'll do about five, cut it off and then do the last five. And do it somewhere. Now I like to really crimp these the best I can. That might be a little shaky on the camera. See I can always tell my shell my casings at the range because it's got that crimp on it. You can definitely tell when they're hand loaded casings. So I'll put these in over here. Probably only gonna film a couple of these, so that's honestly probably shaking my camera. So I know the tape was shaking. See that one? That one I messed up. I doubt you'll be able to pick it up on the camera. But instead of crimping it, it pushed the bullet down in. Don't know why either. You can even see a difference in height. I think that one's probably at the point where it's not safe. So I'm going to throw this one out. Alright, now this one. I don't want to be shooting ones like that. That'll spike the pressure a lot. Basically, it seated the bullet way too far down. Right, I'm going to cut the video off now. start flying on the crimping process. It's probably the easiest of them all. The decapping is also pretty easy. So this is a demonstration of how fast you can go in a single stage. I mean obviously it's not as fast as the progressive. But you can still bang them out fairly quick. I mean honestly this whole reloading process has probably been less than an hour. I'll try to figure out the exact cost involved. But right there is 42 rounds, 45 ACP. It's also a good idea just to do a quick quality check. I'm going to dump them all out. Just go over, take a quick look at them all, make sure I don't see any that are under the overall length. It would also be a good idea just to pick like three or four of them out, just like that, and take these and do a couple quality tests on them. Basically, just measure them, make sure they're under the, make sure they're in compliance with the overall length, under and over, all that goodness. Just basically do a quality check. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. So that's basically the end of this video. That's the end of my quality check as well. I'm not going to measure them because I know they're the right size. This is a little hand loading that I do all the time. I don't mess with the die in between, it's set for one. It's worked before, so it should work now. Overall, it's actually very easy to do. It's kind of scary when you first start off. 
don't really know what you're doing, but you'll learn pretty quick. I like the length I have them seated at, I like the power it has, I like the accuracy, and I like the reliability. If you seat it out much further with my gun, it jams, and it jams a lot. So as I'm picking them up, I'm also looking to make sure there's nothing wrong with them, no defects or anything. And so that is the end of this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. And subscribe if you like the video.